look like we're recording, so we'll go ahead and start. I'd like to welcome everybody today to the Latter-day Saint Church meeting, particularly uh, those who haven't attended before, since this will be broadcast. You're sure welcome. We'll try to do this each week. I'm sure you're getting probably really tired of the, the, the uh, really close quarters and the seclusion, the smoke. But I want uh, you to be aware, you know, Rod and I are here today uh, showing our love and appreciation to you. Carter gives his love also. So I still haven't forgotten you, Kevin, or Robert, or Vince, or, or Obadiah. You know, all your faces are in my mind, and I want you to realize it's almost been six months, but every week I go to a special spot and I think of you, look, think of your faces. And yesterday I was able to go up above the smoke in a, a backwoods area, really a sacred spot for me, and I did spend the time to think of each of you and wish you the absolute best. Uh, you know, we believe in spiritual energy causes change, and it's changed my life, and I just hope today that we can spend a little bit of time empowering you to change your life. I'll have to excuse sometimes, we might have some problems and uh, in sharing, so excuse me to work out the bugs. You can see that Miss Blackter and I, or Rod and I are, are not kids anymore, but we're doing so many Zooms. We got a great Zoom meeting today uh, with our stake, uh, as well as each week we have meetings with our local church, and it is interesting. So, but first is we'd like to begin with a song, and in the future I'll give you some really good music, maybe from the Tarpon Cadillac or Choir, but uh, if you don't mind, we're going to just go back to a song we was one of our favorites when we were there every week, one of Kevin's favorites, uh, called In Humility Our Savior, and uh, Rod and I will try to sing it. It won't turn out very well, but you're welcome to sing along or think about the words as we present them. So I'll put the words up, and, and then if you don't mind, uh, let's follow along. So, Mr. Blackner, are you ready to go? Yes, sir. We'll start with this sound. In, okay, here we go. In humility, our Savior, grant thy spirit, here we pray. As we meet in love as brothers, in thy name is holy let me not forget O Savior thou is bleed and die for me when my heart was filled and broken on the cross at Calvary, fill our hearts with sweet forgiving. Teach us tolerance and love. Let our prayers find access to be in thy holy courts such above. Then when we have proved worthy of thy sacrifice divine, Lord, let us regain thy presence. Let thy glory round us shine. That's a beautiful song, and I just love it. And I, it kind of goes back to what we want for everyone, and that is to 
to be able to change and live our lives in such a way that we'll be able to enjoy the presence of our Father in heaven after this life, that we'll be able to live together as one big family and enjoy all the many wonderful things that our Father in heaven has planned and prepared for us. I would like to go ahead and start now with a, a prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank thee for this beautiful Sabbath day that thou hast blessed us with and for the opportunity that we have through the technology of today to communicate with one another in this time of pandemic that we will be able to let each another know the the love that thou hast for us and the blessings that thou hast in store for us. Help us to feel and know thy love and and to be able to to help others as well understand the love that that thou hast for all of us. And we say this in the name of thy son Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks, Rod. So we thought it'd be appropriate because we won't have the luxury of, of sharing scriptures directly together and the great power it is to read and share the scriptures together that we've been able to experience this year going through the Book of Mormon as well as last year going through the, the New Testament. Would encourage everyone to read their scriptures daily and glean the power. You, know, you, need, the, you need the power to, to deal with the, the issues that you've been associated with. So we ask that you would do that. Uh, but for this meeting, I thought it would be appropriate to listen to one of the, what we call general authorities, some of the prophets, some of the classic opportunities we have to listen to our file leaders. Uh, they're not necessarily special in some ways, but they are, they have been given the authority to speak in the Lord's name. And I thought this one, this particular talk by Elder Ramos was particularly appropriate for this time as, as we have oftentimes we think we've made too many mistakes to change. And uh, I know one of our brothers there, I won't mention names, how, how that plays with our emotions and plays with our conscience. And sometimes, uh, particularly when our, our uh, not only our physical, but our mental health is not ideal. We do and say things that, are, that we regret. And we look at life as a time of improvement and you make mistakes to learn from. And I think this particular uh, talk is excellent for that. So I would ask that you would listen and then we'll have a quick comment uh, at the end. It's only 10 minutes. Mistakes are a fact of life. Learning to skillfully play the piano is essentially impossible without making thousands of mistakes, maybe even a million. To learn a foreign language, one must face the embarrassment of making thousands of mistakes, maybe even a million. Even the world's greatest athletes never stop making mistakes. Success, it has been said, isn't the absence of failure, but going from failure to failure without any loss of enthusiasm. With the invention of the light bulb, Thomas Edison said, I didn't fail 1,000 times. The light bulb was an invention with 1,000 steps. C.S. Lewis called failures finger posts on the road to achievement. Hopefully, each mistake we make becomes a lesson in wisdom, turning stumbling blocks into stepping stones. Nephi's unwavering faith helped him go from failure to failure until he finally found or obtained the brass plates. It took Moses 10 attempts before he finally found success in fleeing Egypt with the Israelites. We may wonder, if both Nephi and Moses were on the Lord's errand, why didn't the Lord intervene and help them achieve success on their first try? Why did he allow them and why does he allow us to flounder and fail in our attempts to succeed? Among many important answers to that question, here are a few. First, the Lord knows that these things shall give us experience and shall be for our good. 
Second, to allow us to taste the bitter that we may know to prize the good. Third, to prove that the battle is the Lord's and it is only by His grace that we can accomplish His work and become like Him. Fourth, to help us develop and hone scores of Christ-like attributes that cannot be refined except through opposition and in the furnace of affliction. So amid a life full of stumbling blocks and imperfection, we all are grateful for second chances. In 1970, as a new freshman at BYU, I enrolled in a beginning course on the essentials of physics, taught by Jay Balaf, an outstanding professor. After finishing each unit of the course, he would administer an exam. If a student received a C and wanted a better grade, Professor Balaf would allow the student to take a modified exam covering the same material. If the student received a B on the second attempt and was still unsatisfied, he could take the test a third time and a fourth and so on. By allowing me numerous second chances, he helped me excel and finally earn an A in his class. He was an uncommonly wise professor who inspired his students to keep trying, to consider failure as a tutor, not as a tragedy, and to not fear failure, but to learn from it. Recently, I telephoned this great man, 47 years after taking his physics course. I asked him why he was willing to allow students unlimited attempts to improve their grade. His response, I wanted to be on the same side as the students. While we are grateful for second chances following mistakes or failures of the mind, we stand all amazed at the Savior's grace in giving us second chances in overcoming sin or failures of the heart. No one is more on our side than the Savior. He allows us to take and keep retaking His exams. To become like Him will require countless second chances in our day-to-day -day struggles with the natural man, such as con controlling appetites, learning patience and forgiveness, overcoming slothfulness, avoiding sins of omission, just to name a few. If to err is human nature, how many failures will it take us until our nature is no longer human but divine? Thousands? More likely, a million. Knowing that the straight and narrow path would be strewn with trials and that failures would be a daily occurrence for us, the Savior paid an infinite price to give us as many chances as it would take to successfully pass our mortal probation. The opposition which He allows can often seem insurmountable and almost impossible to bear, yet He doesn't leave us without hope. To keep our hope resilient as we face life's trials, the Savior's grace is ever ready and ever present. His grace is a divine means of help or strength, an enabling power that allows men and women to lay hold on eternal life and exaltation after they have expended their own best efforts. His grace and His loving eye are upon us throughout our entire journey as He inspires, lightens burdens, strengthens, delivers, protects, heals, and otherwise succors His people, even as they stumble along the straight and narrow path. Repentance is God's ever-accessible gift that allows and enables us to go from failure to failure without any loss of enthusiasm. Repentance isn't His backup plan in the event we might fail. Repentance is His plan, knowing that we will. This is the gospel of repentance, and as President Russell M. Nelson has observed, it will be a lifetime curriculum. In this lifetime curriculum of repentance, the sacrament is the Lord's designated way of providing continual access to His forgiveness. If we partake with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, he proffers us weekly pardon as we progress from failure to failure along the covenant path. For notwithstanding their sins, my bowels are filled with compassion towards them. But just how many times will He forgive us? How long is His long-suffering? On one occasion, Peter asked the Savior, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Presumably, Peter thought seven was a sufficiently high number 
to emphasize the folly of forgiving too many times and that benevolence should have its limits. In response, the Savior essentially told Peter to not even count, to not establish limits on forgiveness. Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Obviously, the Savior was not establishing an upper limit of 490. That would be analogous to saying that partaking of the sacrament has a limit of 490, and then on the 491st time, a heavenly auditor intercedes and says, I'm so sorry, but your repentance card just expired. <laughs> From this point forward, you're on your own. The Lord used the math of 70 times 7 as a metaphor of his infinite atonement, his boundless love, and his limitless grace. Yea, and as often as my people repent, will I forgive them their trespasses against me. That doesn't mean that the sacrament becomes a license to sin. That's one reason the Lord included this phrase from the book of Moroni. But as oft as they repented and sought forgiveness with real intent, they were forgiven. Real intent implies with real effort and real change. Change is the principal word, the guide to the scriptures, uses to define repentance, a change of mind and heart that brings a fresh attitude toward God, oneself, and life in general. That kind of change results in spiritual growth. Our success, then, isn't going from failure to failure, but growing from failure to failure without any loss of enthusiasm. Concerning change, consider this simple insight. Things that don't change remain the same. This obvious truth isn't meant to insult your intelligence, but is the profound wisdom of President Boyd K. Packer, who then added, and when we are through changing, we're through. Because we don't want to be through until we become as our Savior is, we need to continue getting up each time we fell or fall with a desire to keep growing and progressing despite our weaknesses. In our weakness, he reassures us, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Only with time-lapsed photography or growth charts can we discern our physical growth. Likewise, our spiritual growth is usually imperceptible except through the rearview lens of time. It would be wise to regularly take an introspective look through that lens to recognize our progress and inspire us to press forward with a steadfastness in Christ, having a perfect brightness of hope. I am eternally grateful for the loving, kindness, patience, and long-suffering of heavenly parents and the Savior who allow us countless second chances on our journey back to their presence. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. That, that's a wonderful talk. I just love that talk. And I, I like the fact that he points out that no matter what we do, our Father in Heaven is there for us. He is there to forgive us. He's there to help us. He loves us and He is there for us. And I just, I, I love that part. It made me kind of think of myself. And there's times when I've made mistakes. And I was just I was thankful that I had a Father in Heaven who is going to forgive me of the problems that I've had. But the, the thing that I found interesting out of it, and, they, and he mentioned the comment about working at it, and it reminded me of if you have a problem, it has to work on it. You have to keep working on it and don't give up. And it kind of brought back to years ago, I used to love athletics and I was a wrestler and a pole vaulter in college. And I, uh, one of my heroes, he was on the, the Wheaties box. He used to put the Olympic champions on Wheaties boxes. And his name was Bob Richards. And he was an Olympic pole vaulter. And, and when you hear the story behind him, he, this guy went through an awful lot to become an Olympian. And but he just, he worked at it. But his whole philosophy was, he said, God so constituted life 
that everything develops through work. He said, how do you get a bigger or a stronger muscle? You work at it. How do you get a better mind or, or how are you able to, to think better? You use your mind, you have to work at it. And those type of things, they said, you just have to work at it. Don't stop. Keep working, don't give up, and, and you, will, you will accomplish whatever you want. And it doesn't matter. I mean, if, if you've done any athletic events, as I did, like pole vaulting, you know that it is only after running down that exact same runway a thousand times, moving this way, moving that way, trying this angle, trying that angle, that you really find out, how do I do this better? How can I do the best of my ability? And it's only through not stopping, not giving up. Um, and like I said, the, the, the perfect thing that he brought out of this was 70 times seven, just keep trying, don't give up. You have someone who is there for you in your corner to help you, to give you the strength that you need and don't give up. And I can give you examples of examples of people who have, who just didn't give up, who, yes, they committed mistakes or they had problems, but they didn't give up. They kind of changed how they did things, though. They kind of said, okay, if this is leading me down the wrong path, I have to change paths and try a different path. They walked on a different path, and then all of a sudden, they didn't look back at those bad things and says, no, I don't want to go back that direction. I'm not going to walk down that path again. I've got a new path that I'm walking down. And then they didn't have those problems anymore. Through the, the, the beauty of repentance is we can forget those things we did and not do them again. And I, I just, I know, like I said, I've seen in my life how our Father in Heaven will help us through this, through the atonement of Jesus Christ. There is a better way and we can make it there. No matter what the problem is, we can make it there. And I, Say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Well, thanks, sir. Great example. Now, Rod is obviously a better athlete than me. You know, as a wrestler, I wrestled 98, if you can believe it, in my sophomore year, and there was eight of them. And I was probably out of eight, I was probably the seventh. So I would suggest one other thing. Isn't it interesting when he said a million times that you're going to make a million mistakes? So maybe on the uh, metaphor of a pole vaulter, unfortunately, a lot of times people have set the bar way too high. And this is, this is a special gift that you have to develop. When you set the bar way too high, no matter how hard you try, you never make it. So for me, I'd probably sit it right down to where I could probably hop over it with my foot first. If the point is, you know, when he talked about that uh, repentance card, you know, that your repentance card might run out, you know, be aware there's an incremental part of how you become a better person. And the only thing I can say is this, is that if you pray, if you read some scripture, pray with real intent and ask God, God, what is that one thing? What's that one part of the bar I could raise a teeny bit? He will tell you. I can testify to you. He will tell you something that will stretch you, but is achievable. People maybe tell you to jump up too high. Some people say, forgive up, never jump at all. God says, incrementally jump a little higher. And that's what I would encourage all of you to do. You know, just seeing how many of you progressed is just really inspiring to me. And Rod and I both said, boy, we miss seeing you guys. We really sincerely miss seeing you. You enhance our lives by our opportunity to serve you. And we miss that deeply. Uh, but I just, again, I, I want, and I'm looking forward, I'm so looking forward. He talked about that slow photography, you know, how you don't see growth. Maybe like growth, your, your stomach grows pretty fast. I'm really looking forward to seeing you again someday and seeing the growth that you've achieved. And I, I'm hoping that it's incrementally, incrementally higher. And I can say that with sincerity in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
So thank you so much. We will try to make a, a short video like this each week, and uh, you won't have to endure our singing <laughs> this next time. I just that was a connection that we had with you that I really wanted to share, maybe personally more than than your eardrums. So I apologize for that. We'll probably do a little tabernacle choir or something else next time. But if you don't mind, I'd like to leave with a prayer and wish you the best and wish you Godspeed. Father in heaven, we're grateful it was time to, to meet via a meeting app to our friends at the state hospital. Would ask that uh, with the power of love that we have and with the authority that Rod and I have as brothers in the priesthood, that we ask a blessing upon the lives of these men who are struggling right now with an extra burden of smoke and COVID and less opportunities to interact in positive ways, would ask that this might not bring them down, but with your love as they turn to thee, might empower them that they might incrementally improve, that the Holy Spirit might whisper in their souls and conscience that it's worth it to be a little better today. And we ask for safety for our our brothers and friends. We ask for health for our brothers and friends. And we look forward for the day that we can all be together, not only in this life, but in the life to come, that we truly know will be. And we say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we'll do the old wave <laughs> and absolutely best wishes to everybody.